you have almost, the floor. Almost believable, right? Almost believable. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable <coughs> Prime Minister, the Honorable Leader of Opposition, members of Cabinet, and members of Parliament. I rise to take this opportunity to respond to the 2019-2020 budget address. And may I also take this opportunity to <coughs> express a big binakabakalebu to all the hardworking civil servants in putting this budget estimate together. Honorable Speaker, I have said this before, and I will say it again, that this Fiji First Government, the most authoritarian, mm -hmm. callous, yes. and inept government that <laughs> Fiji has ever seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. This budget, Honorable Speaker, drives Fiji further down the road of disaster. Yes. Therefore, I do not support it, and it must be defeated. Honorable Speaker, our people are screaming in pain over crime, poverty, high food prices, crisis in the health sector and in the education sector, problems with infrastructure, traffic congestion, and the loss of business competitiveness. And this budget has done nothing to ease the pain. Honorable Speaker, this government has become numb to the needs of the people of Fiji. They have become deaf to the cries of our people. They have become blind to the crisis facing our country. They have become mute to the abuse of positions they hold in trust for the people. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, all Fijians except this Fiji First Government are concerned and worried about our futuristic Fiji. Mm. For it is very clear that this government has lost its way yes. and is on a free fall. And this so-called Bainimarama boom will only bring us doom. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, this Fiji First Government in previous budgets and also in this one are all only lining the pockets of the rich. Yes. They do not care about the poor. Oh, no. Is wasting our hard-earned money. Absolutely. Is not credible. No. Is irresponsible and therefore unfit to government. Absolutely. Honorable Speaker, this Fiji First Government is lining the pockets of the rich at the expenses of the poor. For example, take the, the free milk program. In the last four years, the government paid out about 13.8 million to CJ Patel. And if the current trend continues in the next four years, government would be paying out about 20 million. And this allocation is not under requisition, Honorable Speaker. And that means that payments to CJ Patel are processed faster and given priority. Compared to, for example, Honorable Speaker, under child protection and poverty benefits and women plan of action, as alluded to by the Assistant Minister, are all held under requisition. Honorable Speaker, according to maritime communities like the Faraway Love Group, Free milk is not a priority dietary need as compared to the healthy, sustainable food supply from the land and sea. Therefore, fiber boat and engine is their priority because it is multifunctional and will get them the real value for our money and the quality of life to our people. Honorable Speaker, the Sodelpa government will review the free milk program and pursue other programs that is more beneficial to our children. For example, the menstrual health and hygiene in primary schools for young girls by strengthening the UNICEF WASH programs under the Ministry of Education in the provision, in the provision of menstrual health hygiene rooms 
in all primary schools and the use of sustainable, reusable sanitary products so that our young girls feel proud to be girls and not stigmatized by staying home for five days and missing out from schools and other normal activities. Honorable Speaker. No idea, no idea, no idea. You got no idea about it. Our people get the real value for their money and visible impact in the well-being of their young daughters and granddaughters and family as a whole. As a nation, Fiji will make significant impact in the achievement of Sustainable Development Goals 1, 3, 4, 5 and 6 as compared to the free milk program where the target beneficiary, CJ Patel, and not our children. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, may I also take this time and congratulate Andy Asenada Valda Kandre, a young girl in class 7 at St. Agnes Primary School who won the DHL competition and will be the ball carrier in the Fiji versus Wales rugby in Japan this November, this September. Honorable Speaker, I'll move on to the e-ticketing system. This system has brought about a huge burden to our people, particularly the traveling public and the poor. Their problems and frustration is a clear reflection that this program has failed the people. The, e, the bus e-ticketing system has brought about, in many instances, of fare being overcharged, and the processes given to correct this problem is inconvenient and tiresome. For example, Honorable Speaker, fares are being overcharged, like for instance, 10 cents, or even a dollar, or two dollars, or even sometimes more. So if, if 1,000 people are overcharged 10 cents daily, that would be about $100, and weekly, $500, monthly, $2,000, yearly, $24,000, and for four years, $96,000. Honorable Speaker, who gets this extra money? Is it Vodafone? or is it the government? Honorable Speaker, this type of program further reflects Fiji First government's poor social policy, which excludes people from the decision-making processes about their lives through policy and program formulation that create systems and social structures that are oppressive, disempowering, and dependent. Honorable Speaker, dependence creates poverty, isolation, indignity, powerlessness, and marginalization. Honorable Speaker, during constituency visit, people have spoken that they prefer the cash system. But this government is not listening to them. And why? Is it because of the pressure from companies involved who fund Fiji First? <laughs> Honorable Speaker, the Sadalpa government will listen and engage with nothing about us, without us approach to bring about policies that create an enabling environment for our people towards self-independence, integration, empowerment, self-help, and self-determination. Honorable Speaker, Sodelpa will review the bus e-ticketing program and have a dual system in place very soon, very soon. And that will include cash payment. Honorable Speaker, this Fiji First Government does not care for the poor as reflected in their policies and programs. For example, let us look at the TELS. The 2019 projection says that there are about 39 students under TELS, and by 2020, total budget is about 750 million. For these 39,000 students, I strongly believe that more than half come from poor families and also from indigenous Fijians and as such they will all continue to struggle in future. But on the other hand, I strongly believe that the recipients for the TOPAS, which is a full scholarship, are mostly at least 80% are from well-to-do family and are not from indigenous families. Oh, 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 oh.
Honorable Speaker, developmental policy should be formulated and implemented to ensure that all the different groups of people in our community, economically disadvantaged groups, socially marginalized groups, are all given opportunities so that there is balanced development in our country. This present scholarship policy is discriminatory towards the poor and the indigenous population and any responsible government cannot afford to turn a blind eye. Other countries like Australia and New Zealand and even the previous SDL government engage in affirmative action to address the specific needs of disadvantaged groups so to balance the developmental gap. And likewise, Honorable Speaker, Sadelpa government will pursue affirmative action to narrow the gap. Order. Honorable Speaker, Order. may I remind the other side of the House that the reason stated for the 2006 coup was to rid Fiji of corruption. The very fact that there is lack of transparency and accountability in the provision of data in the scholarship system is a breeding ground for corruption. Yes. Furthermore, Honorable Speaker, the fact that there has been a huge reduction of 200 million in the education sector signals the doom and gloom brought about by this Bainimarama government. And if this government really care about our people, then it must quickly establish an ed education commission to look into our education sector, otherwise our children's education, our hope, our future leaders, our dreams for Fiji's future is shattered and doomed. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, this Fiji First government is irresponsible and is wasting our money, our hard-earned taxpayers' money. For example, Honorable Speaker, the T.C. Winston Disaster Management Program was a disaster. The Help for Home Initiative for the purchase of building materials for repair or construction homes was given to the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation to administer. Despite the fact that there was the already established government system and processes under the divisional commissioners, and relevant ministries and departments like regional and rural development and the National Disaster Management Division. Honorable Speaker, according to the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation Annual Report 2016 and 2016 to 2017, the ministry was very ill-prepared and faced a lot of challenges when they took on this huge responsibility which also adversely affected their core work because there was no additional staff or any other much needed resources provided. For example, there was no standard operation procedures to guide the ministry in this huge task. There was a lot of pressure from key players like the Minister of Economy, Solicitor General's Office, Vodafone and hardware shops. And this gave rise to discrepancies which was further aggravated due to the continuous change in the directives from decision makers. Honorable Speaker, we wonder who are those decision makers. <coughs> Honorable Speaker, the role of the Ministry of Women, Children, Poverty Alleviation in that program was only to register the 39,617 applicants. The issuance of MPISA cards was the responsibility of Vodafone, and Vodafone reported directly to the Ministry of Economy. The Ministry of Economy coordinates the ten, with the 10 selected hardware companies for the delivery of building materials. And Honorable Speaker, all records on the total amount used for the program, the total amount paid out to each hardware shop, or the amount paid up to Vodafone, or any other information for the TC Winston Health for Home Initiative Rehabilitation Program is not with the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, it is with the Ministry of Economy. 
Honorable Speaker, that strongly suggests political interference by this Fiji First Government. And because of this, the T.C. Winston disaster management was a disaster. The supply and delivery of housing materials from the hardware shops was very unreliable and problematic. The whole project was very poorly coordinated. It was a failure. And even today, people are still struggling to build their house and to rebuild their lives. Honorable Speaker, as for the schools under T.C. Winston Rehabilitation Program, primary schools in Yavaka, Gamea, Avea in Venombalabu, Nakondu Mundu in Koro are still not completed. In some cases, community halls are being used as classrooms, with classes from 1 to 8, all going on at the same time in this big hall without any partition. Imagine the distraction to students and the difficulties teachers face in trying to teach. So how does the Minister for Education expect quality of education for these children? Furthermore, Honorable Speaker, why should we believe this Fiji First Government, who continuously make false promises and fails to deliver? And let me give, you a, give us a few examples. From 2015 budget up until this budget, the Namboa Lutan development has been allocated 15.7 million in total, but no real work has taken place. In my recent visit just two weeks ago, the only change I saw was the change in the fence around the market and the big boulders in the jetty area acting as a seawall, some leveling groundwork, and all this work may have costed at the most two million. So where has all this money that was budgeted for the development on Bowalu town gone to? And even basic utilities like, like the power supply in the passenger waiting shed at the jetty is still not being connected. And this is right from 2015. And I had raised this in this house on few occasions. The intermittent power supply in the Nambowalu government station and nearby villages has not changed for the last 40 years. The 24 hours power supply only came on one week before the election and during the election week. And after that, all went back to square one. Honorable Speaker, for the Nasinu Nosori Corridor, a new Nosori Hospital was promised and allocated 6 million in 2015. And 2016 budget, nothing happened. And now it has totally disappeared from the budget. A swimming pool, tr waste transfer station from the 2015 and 26 budgets totaling 4 million, but nothing happened in Nasinu. And again this morning we heard there'd be swimming pool in Lotoka. And again in the budget, another allocation for Nasinu, swimming pool, 480,000 being allocated. Do we believe that this will happen after all the false promises? Furthermore, Honorable Speaker, from 2018 and 2020 budget, we've heard about the construction of Barefoot College under the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation. As of, as of now, as of now, only a signpost is standing on that designated area. Nothing else has happened, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, to those watching TV and those listening to radio, and also to us in here, I had asked these questions before, and I will ask them again, for I believe the answers have not changed. Do you really feel safe today than 10 years ago? Yes. No. Do you feel secure in your job? Yes. Has the economy improved? Yes. You must be dreaming, you must be dreaming. Are you confident enough to open a business? Yes. Has your purchasing power increased, Honorable Prime Minister? Yes. Are we getting any better health care? Yes. Are your children getting better education? Yes. Order. 
to the main staff infrastructure. Have they fixed and maintained our road and improved our drainage? Are you satisfied with the behavior of this Fiji First Government? Yes. Honorable Speaker, do you have any hope, any semblance of hope, that this Fiji First Government will make your life better? Yes. Honorable Speaker, I believe we've all heard a resounding no. It's a big fat no, and as such, Honorable Speaker, I do not support this budget. Yeah.